from the Epistle of Blessed Peter the Apostle. Dearly beloved, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, being lovers of the brotherhood, merciful, modest, humble, not rendering evil for evil, nor railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing. For unto this you are called, that you may inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him decline from evil and do good. Let him seek after peace and pursue it, because the eyes of the Lord are upon the just, and his ears unto their prayers but the countenance of the Lord upon them that do evil things. And who is he that can hurt you if you be zealous of good? But if also you suffer anything for justice sake, blessed are ye. And be not afraid of their fear, and be not troubled, but sanctify the Lord Christ in your hearts. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Unless your justice abound more than that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to them of old, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. And whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. If therefore thou bring thy gift at the altar, and there thou remember that thy brother hath anything against thee, leave there thy offering before the altar, and go first to be reconciled to thy brother, and then coming, thou shalt offer thy gift. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Today is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, and this Holy Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. The second collection today is for the Black and Indian Missions. Last week we had Father John Bosco from Uganda speak to us of the needs of his diocese, and there was a collection taken for him last Sunday. However, if you did not donate then, or you couldn't, and you want to donate now, this would be the last opportunity to do so. Just please make sure that the offering is clearly marked Mission Appeal, so that the money you give goes to him, rather than to the second collection or to the parish. So any donations for him must be clearly marked Mission Appeal. This Wednesday, July 13th, is the anniversary of Our Lady's third apparition at Fatima, where she revealed the three secrets, one of them being the vision of hell. The devotions in honor of Our Lady of Fatima will take place after the 6 p.m. Low Mass this Wednesday. Saturday, the 16th of July, is the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. There will be enrollment in the Brown Scapular for anyone who has never been enrolled before on Saturday following the 1 p.m. Mass, and also next Sunday, the 17th, uh, following the 9 a.m. Mass around 10 a.m. It is very, very important that everyone be enrolled in and wearing always the brown scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. So if you or anyone you know has never been enrolled, please make sure that you do so next weekend. The novena in honor of St. Anne begins next Sunday, July 17th. Please refer to the bulletin for the schedule of novena exercises. Uh, this novena on Sunday next week will be at 2.30 p.m in place of the Vespers. Please take a copy of the parish bulletin and read it for further information on upcoming parish events. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.
My dearly beloved in Christ, because of St. Peter's admonition in today's epistle, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, being lovers of the brotherhood, merciful, modest, humble, this Sunday could well be called the Sunday of Fraternal Charity, a virtue so necessary to preserve proper relations with our neighbor. St. Peter speaks to us in a very practical and realistic way. He realizes that with our own weakness and frailty, we cannot preserve peace if we have no compassion for the faults of others, if we do not know how to be kind to those who displease us, and if we cannot bear blame with humility. Anyone who pretends that in achieving a life of perfect harmony with others, he need never suffer any annoyance or displeasure, and that he need never be contradicted or upset, has very little experience of the reality of life and forgets that, as St. Augustine says, we are mortal, frail, and weak, bearing about our bodies like vessels of clay, a source of friction for one another. By reason of our limitations, we have mentalities, tastes, desires, and interests that differ from those of others, and thus we do not always succeed in understanding one another. It even happens that sometimes, without wishing it, and without even the shadow of a bad intention, we work against one another. The remedy for these inevitable failures, when the limitations of our nature are the cause of mutual distress, is that suggested by St. Augustine. Let more room be given for charity. In other words, let us enlarge our hearts by greater love in order that we may better understand and sympathize with one another and to practice greater humility in order to overcome the resentments of self-love. Even if someone does act against us with ill will, we should know how to forgive him according to the words of the Apostle St. Peter, not rendering evil for evil, nor railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing. Today's Gospel repeats and intensifies the same instruction. First of all, our Blessed Lord tells us, unless your justice abound more than that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is a clear allusion to the new law, the law of love, given to us by Jesus himself, and far surpassing the simple law of justice. We cannot content ourselves as the Pharisees did with simply not doing harm to our neighbor. We must practice toward him a fraternal charity. It is not enough not to kill in order to escape the judgment. The master teaches, but whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment. Another aspect of the new law proposed by our blessed Lord concerns our interior dispositions. It is useless to make an exterior display of goodness if this does not proceed from a good conscience and a sincere heart. It does not suffice to avoid giving outward offense to our neighbor. We must avoid, or rather repress, our inner resentment. The Pharisees, with their materialistic interpretation of the law, had completely lost its spirit. They had forgotten that the eyes of the Lord are always upon us, 
and that he sees our intentions as well as our acts. Anger and resentment that smolder in our heart do not escape him. At the same time, Jesus asks great delicacy of us in all our exterior dealings with our neighbor. He demands that we avoid not only offensive acts, but even words that might hurt another, and gossip and damaging assumptions about people based on rumors and prejudices which have no facts to back them. Charity and fraternal harmony meant so much to our blessed Lord that he did not hesitate to tell us, if therefore thou offer thy gift at the altar, and there thou remember that thy brother hath anything against thee, leave there thy offering before the altar, and go first to be reconciled to thy brother. How much our dear Lord loves us. The great doctor of the church, St. John Chrysostom, remarks very aptly, he does not take account of his own honor when he requires us to love our neighbor. He says rather, let my worship be interrupted, but reestablish your charity. Indeed, how can our prayers and sacrifices and good works be pleasing to God when something interferes with perfect harmony between ourselves and our neighbor? How can one approach the altar rail with the many sins of the tongue being committed, some of them even being mortal? We would all do well to take the advice and example of St. Faustina, the Secretary and Apostle of God's Mercy, who in section 92 of her diary writes, When I receive Jesus in Holy Communion, I ask him fervently to deign to heal my tongue so that I would offend neither God nor neighbor by it. I want my tongue to praise God without cease. Great are the faults committed by the tongue. The soul will not attain sanctity if it does not keep watch over its tongue. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.